I just wanted to share really quickly that I was super excited when Heather said that she wanted to cover this topic um, because Heather and I were at a retreat a couple of weeks ago and I spent two days at the retreat and then a day of personal time. And I hadn't taken like real personal time in like 18 months. And after that day of, of turning my phone off and just having fun with some people that I love on Sunday, when I was flying home, I was on the plane, like we were getting ready to take off and I'm going through like mentally, like, okay, I want to implement this. I want to fix this in my business. I want to do this. And I was excited to come home and I was excited to come to work on Monday morning. And I hadn't felt that excitement in a really, really long time. And I think as entrepreneurs, uh, we feel like we have to keep going over and over and we can't stop because our competition is right behind us or we're trying to hit a big goal. We have employees to pay, you know, we have bills to pay. And we have coaches in our space saying, you know, there's one guy with his adage right now is just nobody cares, work harder. So we're getting like drilled into our brain that nobody cares about us. So we shouldn't care about us. We just need to work harder. And then you damage your personal relationships. You damage your relationships with your employees. And ultimately your business is damaged. And it takes months and months to dig out of that hole of damage, fix things, and then really identify why you got burnt out. And I, I was there two weeks ago. So it was like the universe's plan for you to teach me how not to get burnt out again. So I'm, I'm really glad you're doing this. And I'm really glad to be partnered with you on Good Life. I'm so happy with the people that have joined Good Life and, and want to build these great lives, businesses, personal relationships. So with that, I'll hand it off to you. And thank you again, Heather. Thanks, friend. And I'm super excited to be on this journey with you as well. And this is a fun one, and it's really personal. For those of you that signed up for this webinar from the social media post, um, this one is personal. And not only did I go through a severe um, time frame in my life where I actually became burnt out, I have kind of played on the fringes of it over many, many, many years. So whether you are somebody that you're just trying to figure out what this magic time system is and why this would be included, um, or if some of you are experiencing um, playing on the fringes and you just want better tools on how to manage that, or some of you might actually be in a state where you genuinely just need some guidance because you might be where I was. So. Let's jump into this magic time system, part two, burnt out theory. Go ahead and share my screen. David, can you see everything okay here? Looks good. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> Great. All right, guys. So a little bit about me, of course, dog mom, mountain enthusiast, and um, like I mentioned from burnt out theory, recovering workaholic. Um, because of that, advocating for living a good life, which means good health and building wealth. And then, of course, with my wonderful co-host, David Matthews, um, I am based out of Crest Butte, Colorado right now, and I will be starting San Diego very soon. So this webinar is for you if you run a cycle of feeling overwhelmed and then good and then overwhelmed again. If you need a strategy to avoid the potential crash and potential burnout. And also, if you've tried other self-care methods, but you just can't seem to find your cadence. Why the magic time system was created. Being an entrepreneur, specifically a real estate professional, it offers unique challenges in how we manage our time. We wear a lot of hats in real estate, and we also wear many hats in our personal life. So burnt out theory, and ultimately all three sections of the magic time system, were created to create order. And the magic time system includes the per optimizer, which we went over during my last webinar. Today, we're going to cover part two, which is burnt out theory. And then the third and final piece, which kind of brings it all together, we're going to cover in a future webinar. Here is a little infographic for you. And it just shows that while these are individual webinar modules, they all work together. And when you really deeply understand the magic time system and you incorporate all three aspects, that's when you really see a lot of freedom and happiness and the ability to leverage yourself in a lot of ways that are just really beautiful. All right, so let's talk about burnt out theory and why it's important. So 
let's think about working out, like just working our body out, exercising. And when you think about how do you build strength quickly? Well, you exercise consistently, right? And over time you see results. Question is what happens if you go out and you just go balls to the walls and you work out, work out, work out, but you don't rest and regenerate properly during in between your sessions. Well, what happens is you actually start to work against your own efforts and you start to break down the very muscle that you're trying to build. A lot of you know that when you take supplements, a lot of those are actually helping you to recover more quickly. And that's where you're seeing a lot of the strength building. So let's translate the above example of working out into productivity terms. When you're in a good focused mode, you perform at a high level. A lot gets done and usually really well and quickly. When you're not in a good focused mode, you spin and you waste time. So a big time loss is our inability to zone in and focus. And that ability to regenerate quickly allows us to be in a space to focus intensely and get into flow mode. So one of the ways we regenerate quickly is by optimizing our self-care routine. So we are all similar yet we're all unique. So certain routines like the miracle morning, I'm a big fan of Hal Elrod, those work for most of us. And what I'm going to suggest is you should still incorporate what you utilize as your current morning and evening routine. You might adjust slightly based off today's webinar, but for the most part, I believe that those systems should stay in place. And then we're going to talk about what else you can do for self-care so that you're optimizing your time and pulling the right quote unquote levers. So we're going to niche down on what I call your personal plan. A personal plan allows you to regenerate rapidly. And this rapid regeneration, it allows you to show up well in all areas of life. And this is why burnt out theory is part of the magic time system. It is not only joyful to experience personalized self-care, but it actually increases your overall capacity. All right, so let's talk about um, the 12 stages of burnout. And I borrowed this list from psychologist Herbert. And let, oh, here we go. Let's start with one though. <laughs> so the 12 stages, one. And I want you guys to follow this journey because I have a feeling I know where a lot of you tend to play around on this list. And I just wanna see if it's true. Um, so one, excessive drive or ambition. So feeling an obsessive compulsion to prove yourself. This is a lot of us. A lot of us are high achievers um, and that's how we end up in the world of entrepreneurship and um, industries like real estate. Two, pushing yourself to work harder. Like David mentioned, some people have this idea of hustle culture and nobody cares, just work harder. And so when you subscribe to that, you believe that your value is just working harder. Third stage, neglecting to care for yourself, minimizing sleep, eating badly, etc. Now, what's really interesting to me is that when you move into hustle culture, a lot of people actually wear this as a badge of honor. You hear people talking about, oh my gosh, I haven't slept properly in two days, 48 hours, 24 hours. Um, I'm eating um, fast food, dried food. I'm eating poorly. Um, I'm really a big, um, <laughs> I tend to do that a lot. But what happens is people actually tend to feel pride over that. And it's, it's a really interesting concept that you're not taking care of yourself, but yet people will give you credit for pushing through and not sleeping and not eating and still showing up and working. Four, displacing conflicts. So you start dismissing real problems in life and you start sweeping them under the rug, also have been guilty. Five, no time for non-work related needs like socializing or recharging your batteries. This is when other people might start to notice like your family and your friends, they might just start to notice that you're not um, your usual self and you're not starting to incorporate things that typically bring you joy. Six, denying that there are any problems arising from our own behavior and then blaming things on our teammates or work. Seven, withdrawing from social life, maintaining very little social contact with the outside world. Eight, 
exhibiting behavioral changes that are obvious to both friends and family. Nine, depersonalizing and feeling like neither you nor others are valuable. 10, feeling empty inside. 11, feeling depressed, exhausted, and disheartened towards the future. And 12, experiencing burnout, collapsing both mentally and physically. The reason I thought this list was important is that I feel like a lot of us will openly admit that we're experiencing the initial stages, but then we stop sharing when we start reaching the later stages. So right here is an infographic, just clearly shows you from stage one all the way to stage 12, you then move into full burnout. If you don't recognize these stages and you have an action plan to actively prevent all right, so let's talk about a theory that we're going to incorporate into burnt out theory, and that's Pareto's principle. Pareto principle states that for many outcomes, roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. Many of you are familiar with this concept. So in other words, a small percentage of causes have an outsized effect. This concept is important to understand because it can help you identify which initiatives to prioritize so that you can make the most impact. And then here's a little infographic, and we're going to show you how we're going to interlace Pareto's principle, which is just which we just spoke about, and then the six love languages, which some of you are familiar with, and we're going to cover in the next slide. And when they come together in the center, we utilize these two existing principles to carve out what we call the burnt out theory and thus create your personal plan. All right, so talk about, let's talk about the six love languages for those of you that aren't familiar. If you are familiar, feel free to make a comment in chat. Um, now, many of you know, this is actually the five love languages written by Gary Chapman. This cover is very pink. So men on the webinar, if you're adverse to pink, I'm sorry, <laughs> hang with me here. Cause I know a lot of this tends to be something that, um, you know, I, dive into a lot, but some people aren't as interested in this type of concept. So hang in here. Five love languages talk about the fact that we like to experience appreciation and love in a certain way. And he carves them out into five different main ways that we like to experience um, love and appreciation. There is a theory that there's actually a sixth love language, and that's called being known. There is controversy on whether it is actually just a combination of the previous five love languages or if it should be considered an official sixth language. So for today's purposes, burnt out theory, we recognize being known as the sixth love language. And here's our action plan for today. We are going to, number one, find your top two love languages. Step two, create your self-care personal plan based off of your top two love languages. Step three, Incorporate your personal plan in addition to your morning and evening routine. Step four, we're going to utilize Pareto's principle so that 80% of your self-care activities nurture your top two love languages. Step five, we're going to utilize the ultimate guide, Burnout Recovery, which we created for you. And we're going to utilize that printout to find example activities that keep record of new activities that work well. Over time, these two sheets of paper will become your personalized plan. And then step six, we're going to accept that self-care is not a luxury, it's mandatory. So let's jump into the five love languages, which we are now going to call the six love languages. These are the acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch, and then being known. So we're going to dive into each one and then we're going to give you example ideas that you could incorporate um, just kind of as a brainstorm to get you started. Again, over time, your goal is to just start somewhere and then to start to personalize and note things that work for you. But to give you an idea, we're just going to initiate a brainstorm and we're going to start with access service. So access service is for those people where they believe that Actions speak louder than words. Here are some examples for those of you that this is one of your top two love languages. Um, just some ideas that could work well for you to help in your self-care. 
This would be volunteering at an organization with a purpose that has meaning to you. Something that tends to work well as well is checking off something from your honey to-do list. Now, honey-do list tends to be a list we give to other people, but for those that have active service as their top love language, um, they really appreciate having things done. So you might find that you taking the time to check something off your honey-do list, it actually gives you a great reward and makes you feel really cared for, for yourself. Um, cooking yourself your favorite meal and learning how to cook one of your favorite dishes. This sounds random, but putting on a fresh set of bed sheets that you'll appreciate when you go to bed at night. So that self-care of just taking something really minor, but knowing that you'll appreciate it later. Um, hiring a cleaner and having someone that addresses either day-to-day -day cleaning that you don't love to do, so you just feel like things are clean and picked up, or deep clean items that you just never get to, or you always want to, and they're in the back of your head, and just having that done for you. Receiving gifts. These folks love receiving a heartfelt gift, and it what makes them feel most loved. So to incorporate receiving gifts as a self-care routine, some activities that could work well for you. Buy yourself a course about a skill that you like to improve or you just want to learn it for fun. Um, get yourself VIP tickets to a sporting event or a concert. Sign yourself up for a monthly gift club. Kind of fun because every month you don't actually know what you're going to get, but it's this fun little gift you get every month as a surprise. Order your favorite takeout on DoorDash and have it delivered to your home. Receiving gifts is not one of my top love languages, but this is something that it actually brings me a lot of joy. Um, and so I feel like those that have receiving gifts as their top love language, if you perform this more often, you actually might find that it brings you a lot more joy than you realized. Finding random things around the house and DIY it into something useful or beautiful. And then a self-care kit. This would just be a, pre a pre-curated collection of items that you turn to during a difficult time period or when you just feel like you need to step up your self-care. Quality time. This language is all about giving the other person your undivided attention. Quality time, self-care activities. Some good examples. Meditating, going for a long hike, taking a hot bath reading a pleasure book. And essentially the goal here is that you're setting aside uninterrupted time to do this for yourself. Um, this came from an example from a friend and she said that she just really loves thrifting for vintage coffee table books. And she goes out and she just spends an extensive amount of time for no reason other than just for the joy of it. Um, another friend mentioned that she loves just having a full day of cooking for herself. So this could include something really beneficial like meal prep and knowing that you're taking care of yourself, or it could be the opposite and something that doesn't technically have any purpose to it. And that would be just spending a ridiculous amount of time creating a special dish for yourself. Um, another friend said that they love playing video games. And so just spending time playing their favorite video, video game board games or card games makes them really happy. Um, this one also does well with the self-care kit and having that pure curated, pre-curated collection of items that they can turn to. Words of affirmation. Am I allowed to share somebody I know very well loves? <laughs> David, one of David's top two love languages is words of affirmation. <clears throat> so, some suggested activities here for yourself would be reflective journaling. Um, this is going to sound really interesting, but you could batch write letters or short notes to yourself, like just grab um, a sheet of post-it notes or little scrap pieces of paper. And whenever you think of something that you love about yourself, write a little note. Or sometimes people like to sit down and write longer letters to themselves. Um, sometimes these show up as just random varying lengths of notes to themselves. Sometimes they're letters to their future selves. Um, you can really go any direction that you want with this. But the fun part about this is that you would actually seal them up and then you just open them randomly in the future whenever you needed that little boost. 
Um, you could create a custom list of positive affirmations and just read them out loud to yourself every morning. I find that um, um, a pre-existing list of positive affirmations that mean a lot to that particular person and then reading that same list out loud every morning tends to do really well for words of affirmation um, folks. Watching a motivational TED talk, uh, reading inspirational quotes, watching an inspirational movie. Um, another one that I really love that leans back towards batch writing letters is an affirmation collection box. So the batch writing letters or short notes to yourself is about you creating that activity and then surprising yourself by reading those in the future. An affirmation collection box, this is whenever somebody else sends you a letter, a note, an email, a text, something that's just really nice that they send you. Um, essentially, you just keep those and you put them in a box. And whenever you need a boost, you can just open it up and read all of those. All right, physical touch. For those of you that have physical touch as their love language, nothing speaks more deeply than appropriate physical touch. So you might be wondering, well, how do you give yourself this without somebody else giving you a hug? So here's some self-care techniques. A spa day. Um, so physical touch is one of my top two love languages. And something that I have really been geeking out on is um, my friend, Heather Robbins, introduced me to the idea, or she actually really reintroduce me to the idea of this Korean spa, which is out here in San Diego. And so what I'll do is I created a spa kit of all these things I take with me and I just take a full day there. Um, and I just lounge out and it really regenerates me. Um, another thing that works well for physical touch is getting cozy. Uh, scientifically, they found that um, getting a weighted blanket that's approximately 10% of your body weight is the appropriate weight for most people to create the ultimate level of comfort that you receive, that nurturing feeling that you receive from weighted blankets. Um, another thing that works really well if you are just wanting to incorporate a self-care cadence or if you are experiencing a higher level of stress than normal is scheduling a high cadence of massage. So body work, this could be massage like in a spa atmosphere. It could be, um, I've been diving into this new body work called matrix fascial um, body work, um, body scrubs, uh, acupuncture, cupping. These are all things that are hands-on from a professional that help you feel really nurtured. And you can go schedule these whenever you want. Now, what's interesting is some people say, oh, I might get a massage once a month or once every <laughs> years. Um, for those that have physical touch, you might find that getting a massage twice a week, some people even do it, um, sorry, once a week, some even do it twice a week. That works really, really well for you. And it's really regenerative. Um, other things set up, set up an at-home facial, home massagers, an extended cuddle session with your pet, playing ball with your dog. Um, Self-care kit, again, works really well with this love language and having a pre-curated collection of items that you just really love um, to take care of yourself. And then Thought Jar. I talked about this in the first Magic Time System webinar. Thought Jar is the act of um, taking a reflect time module. Um, a lot of times you can incorporate it with a reflect time module or just going out and performing an activity that's a self-care activity, like going on a hike. And then you bring a sheet of paper with you and you just jot down ideas that enter your head. All right, being known. This is the sixth love language that is a little bit disputed, but for those of you that do feel like this describes you, um, paying attention to things about you, like even the tiny little details um, that you've mentioned in passing is what makes you feel really loved. All right, oops. My uh, Zoom um, little button, it's really, um, it's touchy today. All right, so back to being known. Some suggested self-care activities. Binge watching your favorite show. Um, ordering your super specific coffee combo. Uh, a friend mentioned that this really brings her a lot of joy, having that perfect, perfect cup of coffee. Um, read a personal growth book or actually just any book uh, on a topic that you're interested in. Watching YouTube videos that give you more insight into your inner motivations. 
a relationship to others, or just any topic that you're fascinated with. Self-care kit works really well with this love language as well, especially when you take extra time to curate a list of items that you really love. Um, and then thought jar, which I mentioned previously, works well. And then discovery days. So being known as my top love language, and I realized that the days that I felt most regenerated were when I took what I now coined discovery days. And that is essentially when you take an extended period of time and knowing that we don't all have all the time in the world, um, an extended period of time might be two consecutive hours. It might be one, one consecutive hour. It could be a whole day, it just depends on what you have available. Um, and what I do on discovery days is I legitimately like pull out like every toy in my toy jar, like books, my iPad, my computer, I watch, I think about anything that I've ever thought about being interested in. And I basically kind of ADD out. That's the best way to describe it. And I'll one minute be on my um, iPad watching a YouTube about a topic I was interested in. And then I have a book and I skip to that. Basically, I just discover things. And they're all things that I'm interested in. And I give myself the freedom to have no rules around it. And it is amazing how that silly act of giving myself that freedom is really, really regenerative. All right, so those are the six love languages. And then we talked about some examples. And now let's talk about just a few more things here to tie this all together. So the placebo effect. For those of you that are familiar with the placebo effect, go ahead and just type in chat. Um, me, if you're familiar. And essentially, this is uh, the understanding of how something works. Sorry, I'm going to talk about placebo effect and the power of knowing together, just for the sake of time. So the understanding of how something works and how it positively benefits you has been scientifically shown to increase its efficacy. Both Andrew Huberman, he's a neuroscientist from Stanford University, and Joe Dispenza, who focuses on epigenetics and quantum physics, they openly share findings about the power of knowing and the power of the placebo effect. So why am I bringing this up? Well, because it's actually really cool. Point of the magic time system is to increase our time availability, get more done in a shorter period of time. And what is really cool about this is that we have in this infographic, our typical self-care routine, right? So we, we do what we do and that's great. But sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we feel like we don't have things that are fully pulling our lovers and regenerating us the most, but we do something. And then we hop on today's webinar and we learn about the burnt out theory and we go and create our personal plan. So we then are like, okay, I have a structure. I'm going to find out my top two love languages. And then I'm going to utilize Pareto's principle so that I am going to focus on self-care techniques that tend to fall within my that, that fall within my top two love languages. So I'm pulling the 20% lover in Pareto's principle that give me 80% effect, right? So right there, we're optimizing our self-care plan. Then the third cool layer is when you talk about the placebo effect and the power of knowing, you just knowing that you're taking care of yourself and you're optimizing via the burnt out theory and personal plan, it actually further increases the efficacy of all of those things that you're doing to take care of yourself. So David knows I love nothing more than efficiency. I also love optimization. So to me, the fact that we can optimize and then having the power of knowing and placebo effect further optimizes that optimization makes me really happy. And it makes me happy for you guys because we need powerful tools as professionals to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves so we can show up in our full capacity. All right, so now that we talked about all of this, um, I know there's a couple of chats here and David can let me know if there's any questions, um, but we created this resource guide. It's really great, it's very simple. And basically what we did was we reiterated the checklist for you. And then it has six separate pages with the different love languages. 
And all you're going to do is you're going to take the two that fall within your top two. And you'll see that we, re, um, we restated all the examples just to help you brainstorm. And then we have extra little lines there. So you can take those sheets of paper and start writing down what works for you. Over time, you're going to adjust and modify that list. And you're eventually going to come up with something that when you're feeling burnt out, you can just take out those two pages of resources. And you know that what you're going to do works for you. So, all right. David, any questions from today's webinar? Uh, nothing that I couldn't answer. It was pretty, it was interesting to see people's um, love languages. A lot of people came in with um, acts of service. Uh, so that was interesting to me. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What, so what are your top two? I know efficiency isn't an official language, but <laughs> that would be yours. Um, I, I would like to campaign for efficiency to become the seventh love language. So I'm working on that actively. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, my top two are being known and physical touch. Mm, okay. I um, also loved that you covered that getting your perfect coffee is self-care. So now when I go to Starbucks, it's for my mental health and I can justify that expense three times a day. So thank you. <laughs> you know, this is what I really love about the power of knowing and the placebo effect is that you just knowing that doing these little things that might seem like an everyday aspect or it might seem just a little bit silly um, when you actually reframe those activities as self-care, one, you give yourself permission to enjoy it. And then two is that, again, you're actually going to receive more benefit from performing that activity because you, because you know you're nurturing yourself. And so it's really fun because you're no longer being David that has this really specific coffee formula. You're actually someone that just this makes you happy. And so you gift yourself permission and then it just even makes the experience even better because you don't have to fight it and feel like you're being difficult. You're like, I'm just taking care of myself. Right. <laughs> oh, this is awesome.